Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic as ever to have you here because we are working on a Renaissance era stiletto dagger. It is a very exciting build. We got a lot of talented people in the workshop, which is exciting because a lot is getting done. We got lathe work that's getting done. We've got a beautiful little leaf element that's getting done, and we're gonna jump right in to all of that. Before Let's thank today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 video courses in everything from business to marketing to social media to videography and to photography. You can learn it all and get that extra boost of information and skill to make you more marketable when you go to my link in the description because when you hit that link, you're going to be getting two months of Skillshare Premium for free. Skillshare Premium, usually only 10 bucks a month. You can have access to all of their courses for free. Just hit that link. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Let's jump back in. Okay, so Josh has spent a huge amount of time on this piece here in the lathe. This is not one piece, but two parts of our Quillian dagger handle, and we need to cut it in half. This top section is one half. Now we tried parting off this middle half. That didn't go so well. We then tried a diamond separating disc. That didn't go so well. So we're now going to a bandsaw. That's okay, I guess. And this section here is going to be the bottom half of the handle. Now we're gonna have a bronze spacer in between. It's gonna look rather beautiful. This will help give you a little bit of context as to what is going on on this incredible looking handle. I mean, this is just gonna be unbelievable. And also worth mentioning, this is a piece of Damascus. So this needs to get hardened and etched. It's gonna look unbelievable. We're gonna saw this off and then we need to get the blade in the lathe. In fact, we're gonna do both things at the same time. Anybody wanna saw this off? I'm gonna start working on the bone. Yeah. Okay, I've got this piece situated in the lathe with Josh's help. So all machinists watching this now, please close your eyes, as uh, this is the setup that we have. Amazingly, we were able to find a spot in the jaws of the chuck that it sits with that little run out. We're gonna put the tail stock on the tip of the dagger and we need to do some turning in between here. It's gonna be pretty scary, but to get the tail stock on, I'm gonna take a little burr in a micro motor, put a little indentation in there and then we can put the tail stock up to it. That is so diabolical. That is just horrifying. But that is a lathe with a stiletto dagger in it. Time to hopefully not break it. I'll uh... 2500 RPM, here we go. Oh, maybe not 2500. <laughs> There we go, we have a six mil tang. We have a 10 millimeter area up here on the dagger. Exciting times. Maybe we can stick the collet on. Oh, it doesn't fit. Get it, but you want me to get a hammer? I think we need to start again. Let's light the forge, I'm gonna make some more Damascus. Josh, cut the end off. Have a look at that. We have ourselves some fittings that fit. And holy moly, does that look amazing. Mm, finally. This is, this is gorgeous. This needs to get threaded. We also have to put a six millimeter thread on the inside of this, because that is drilled to five millimeters. 
and uh, this is, this is going to be something special. So, might as well cut those threads now. So while he does that threading, I'm going to go ahead and start the facets on this. So we've got ourselves this end piece here, and right now it's pretty dang round. It's time to go ahead and carve eight facets in this so it'll be octagonal. That should be a really nice little accent in the handle. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get to work on that with some files. <laughs> Alright guys, the next step is to take a chunk of this phosphor bronze and turn ourselves up a little pommel for our stiletto. Now we're going to go ahead and thread one end of this so we can actually screw it into the end of the last Damascus piece that we made and that way it'll all hold itself together pretty good. It should look really, really nice. It has been a good collaborative morning so far. Will and Niels started turning down this beautiful little acorn. Now this is gonna have a whole lot of carving done on it and so Will had the bright idea to make this little handle for it. Threads in, just like that, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And it's now time for a little carving on this because it's gonna have some leaf features on it. Mm, yeah. And so... Well, I guess I'll grab that and then go work. <laughs> So while Will is working on the facets of this section, Niels is working on carving the pommel. I am gonna take this piece of bronze, rough it down on the lathe using a mandrel and some super glue before we get this ready for some adornment. Sweet, sweet adornment. So I'm gonna put this on the lathe with some super glue. Oh, look at that. That didn't go so well. So much for super gluing it on a mandrel. Hi there, my name's Alex Steele, and I feel stupid. They say the definition of crazy is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. No! It happened again. I think that'll work a charm. It's both super glued and bolted. If it doesn't, then I'm eating my hat. Thank goodness I'm not wearing one. Because if I did have to eat it, I'd be just eating this glorious orange forged steel mesh back truck hat. And uh, that would just be sad, because I like these hats a lot. Oh, that's satisfying. There we go, on the money. I 
have it turned, polished up to 1500 grit. It's looking pretty beautiful. I'm gonna need a little heat to break off the super glue. Gentlemen. Yes, sir. Shall we put some parts together and we'll see how this is starting to look? Here we go, the flower piece is on. Temporary spacer. First half, bronze spacer I just, oh yes. Oh, that's looking cool. That's it. Bronze spacer I just made. Gentlemen, does that not look utterly a Harry Potter one. Phenomenal. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> That's crazy cool. Okay, we spent some time um, thinking about the next steps. We have an issue, which is this end piece does not sit perfectly straight with the rest of it. Now that's either a problem with the threading on the nail, on the tang that is, or it's a problem with the threading in the end of this piece. This wasn't threaded in the lathe, this tang was threaded with a die, and so it's probably a combination of both. But what we definitely need is a hole in the back. Now, we put this thing on the lathe with the blade in it, just to kind of see how much run out we actually had. The trouble is, as you can see, there is a lot of run out. We can't drill and tap a hole in the back of that right now. That's just not acceptable. So, we're certainly gonna have to deal with the fact that it's bent and wonky, but I think we can do that after the fact. And what we now are gonna try and do is put that piece on this mandrel I made earlier, same thread, and see if it sits any straighter. I don't know if this is gonna be any better. Oh my goodness. That's worse. That's way worse. Okay, found one big problem. Have a look at this. This mandrel that I made today is not a very good mandrel right now. <sighs> okay, so we have messed around with straightening out those pieces. We're getting there, but we're going to do the rest of it once it's all put together as a final tweaking to make sure that when you look down this stiletto, it is all straight and neat and true and perfect. The next step is thinking about that bronze piece I was working on earlier, and so Niels and I, firstly, I think we should do a little proper introduction. Niels. Hello. Great to have you here. Thank you for having me. Niels is a phenomenally talented knife maker That's from appreciated. South Africa. He's visiting, hanging out, having yeah. a good time. We, uh, we spent some time thinking about how we could adorn this. We wanted to put some gemstones in it, that particular bronze piece that is, and we are thinking about how we were gonna lay it out. Now we have a tri-edged dagger. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put six lines of diamonds in the piece, a little pave setting, so that we can reflect some of the shapes and geometries in the rest of the piece, so we can follow along from the lines up here and have your eye go on this beautiful journey from leaf to facet, to facet, to diamonds, to leaf, to knife blade. I think it's going to turn this into a spectacular piece of art if I don't mess up. I am gonna set some stones, meanwhile. What I'm gonna do is continue carving on uh, the pommel. There's some more little leaf elements. You're gonna make those wrap around. That's gonna be so cool. Now the next thing before we go and set stones is to check in with Will and see what he's about to do to the actual blade of this piece. All right, so while those guys are working on that part of it, I'm gonna go ahead and lay out some scribe lines on the dagger blade and then get to grinding. I'm getting set to start cutting. The guys downstairs are working on threading the handle to fit the pommel.
Okay, we've got ourselves one ground up blade right here. You may notice that it's looking a little bit matte black and the reason for that is that we covered it in a coat of high heat spray paint. Uh, which helps protect against uh, forge scale and stuff like that so that hopefully it won't really scale up too much uh, when we go in for the quench. Right now it's time to throw this in the Paragon knife heat treating oven and we'll let it come up to temp before we put it into some Parks 50 quench oil. Now it's time for this one to go into the other knife treat oven for some tempering. It's the next morning. The stiletto has done some tempering. It's looking pretty dang amazing. Got some really nice colors running through it. And it's now time to move on to doing the cleanup work on this as well as the rest of the build. All right guys, we've got the complete rest of the handle and blade pretty much pretty much done, ready for some matches, some final finishing stuff. It's now time to move on to the really fun part, which is the cross guard and quillions. I've got the piece of bronze that we've been using chucked up in the lathe, and I'm just gonna get to work trying to shape this down into something that looks like that. Last after a day and a bit of diamond setting, I have six pave clusters of diamonds around this piece. Super duper exciting. Things are coming together. Okay, I've got the Damascus handle pieces in the knife heat treat oven right now. I'm about to take them out. They've got some wire around them and I'm gonna quench them in the oil. The reason that we harden these Damascus pieces that aren't on the blade is because they etch a lot better when they've been hardened. I don't know why, nobody actually knows. We think it's magic. Okay, now that we've got those pieces heat treated, the plan is to go ahead and cut a little notch in the tang of the blade, as well as in some of the pieces of the handle so that they'll sit in the same place indexed onto the blade every time we put it back together. And that way we know that the petals and the quillions are all gonna be exactly where we want them every time. So Niels has a diamond wheel in one of the flex shafts. He's just gonna cut a little slot in the tang that'll let a pin index into it. Holy moly, that is a nice stiletto. This is so exciting, this thing it looks gorgeous. It feels gorgeous in the hand. It is such a tactile piece to hold. To spin it is just so exciting. And it is shaping up into such a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. This is enormously exciting. What is also enormously exciting is that this isn't it. We're gonna make this thing look 
even better. We have patinas to do, other finishes to do, we have Damascuses to etch, and all of that is gonna be happening in part three of this stiletto build. One of the things I also wanna do is I wanna be able to keep the bronze steel, bronze steel, bronze steel, bronze steel pattern flowing, and we need to do that by adding a piece of steel, a steel spacer, between the quillions and this little flower element. This is such a great adventure, developing on this design and having some great people here hanging out and helping us as we make this. It has just been such a fun week and I wanna give a big thank you to Josh Smith of Josh Smith Knives and Niels Vandenberg of Black Dragon Forge for hanging out with us and being such great company. As we finish out the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, which has been Skillshare. Now, of course, Skillshare, online learning community with over 25,000 video courses that you can have access to with a premium membership. Now, premium membership, usually only 10 bucks a month, and that is going to allow you to pick and choose whatever skill it is that you want to learn, and learn it, and be able to refine it using Skillshare. The course that I'd like to recommend today is How to Edit Photos for Instagram by John Olson. John is a YouTuber. YouTuber, and he's got a great YouTube channel. I hear he's also expecting a baby, but that's beside the point. All his content has a beautiful aesthetic to it, and if you want to learn how to edit great Instagram photos, go ahead and check out that course. Remember, if you hit my link in the description, you're gonna be getting two months of Skillshare Premium for free, so I would be thrilled if you do that. Go get yourself some good information. Thank you as always, it's been a pleasure having you along. Oh, one little final update note. Something really cool happened. So, from the drawing we made of the stiletto, without us even having finished the stiletto, somebody has already got a tattoo of that stiletto on their leg. Noab Tattoo did this design on one of his clients, and that's a pretty, that's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty wild thing. You know, this design is now on somebody's leg. Forever. That's cool. Anyway, this thing is just crazy. And of course, big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. It has been a pleasure. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.